What's up and welcome Stellar Blade, a debut game from the studio Shift Up. Now what exactly is Stellar Blade? Well, to describe it in the most broad way possible, Stellar Blade is a game that took two pages from the book of Nier Automata and one page from the book of Dark Souls. Or to put it more simplistically, this is a game that has a lot of elements and mechanics similar to Nier Automata, with some of its elements and mechanics taking inspiration from the Dark Souls games. And all of this comes together to create a unique game. However, being unique doesn't always translate to being good so after spending around about 15 hours in this game i will go over some of its important elements to answer a simple question is teleblade worth your time Now the story of Stellar Blade is not that great. Without spoiling anything, it has a lot of similar story beats to Nier Automata and has an interesting theme and some interesting concepts. However, it is wasted as the story is not told very well at all. The writing of this game is awful. The biggest issue I have of it is probably the exposition dialogue. This game sometimes just randomly throws exposition at you and you might say well that's basically what all games do and well you are correct. However in this game at times it is done so obviously to the point where it feels like the characters are breaking the fourth wall. These characters are meant to be part of this world so when these characters start acting stupid and oblivious to the world that they have been living in for years in order to dump a bunch of exposition on the player about the most obvious things that they should know about it, your immersion is kind of broken. Despite the obvious exposition dumps, the rest of the story is written pretty badly, as it just doesn't really flow or unfold in a very satisfying way at times. The characters do not help the story either. None of these characters feel fleshed out, nor are any of them interesting. Combine this with some terrible voice acting and boom, you have the recipe for some boring characters. Seriously, the English voice acting in this game is just bad and most of the time the voice actors sound bored. Now despite the story in this game taking a little bit of a backseat, I do still think that the story has way more potential, but sadly it never reached that potential. Overall the story is pretty bland, not really that great, it's definitely not the worst story out there by any means, but it's pretty forgettable and could have been told in a much better way with some better dialogue and some more interesting characters. The environmental design is decent. This is a post-apocalyptic game and the environments are well designed to fit this theme. This game's biomes mostly range from dystopian city areas to wide open desert spaces and some futuristic sci-fi structures. There are some areas in this game where you will get a glimpse of these beautiful dystopian landscapes and yeah, at times the game looks beautiful, but I don't think there is that much more to say about the environmental design in this game. It looks decent, it's not the greatest looking or most unique looking environments I've ever seen, but it's perfectly fine. The same goes for the graphics, it's definitely not the greatest looking game on the PS5, nor does it push the PS5 to its limits, but it's not ugly looking, nor does it feel outdated, so I'm okay with it. One interesting thing about the environments that I liked was related to Zion, throughout the game you you will do missions where you collect hypercells that are used to wake up the people in Zion. The cool thing about this is that more and more NPCs can be seen the more hypercells you collect, which I thought was a neat touch and probably the only really cool thing related to the environments. 
Look, I'm not someone too bothered by graphics. I think the art style and the environmental design are more important factors when it comes to the game's visual presentation. And well, those game's environments are good enough. It looks fine and that's good enough in my opinion. This game is mostly a linear game. The linear levels are pretty well done. It is definitely fun to explore these levels. And the level design is almost certainly inspired by Dark Souls. This means that important items could be surrounded by enemies. There are a bunch of doors that uh, don't open from the side and you can explore a level to discover a shortcut that takes you back to a spot you were a few hours ago. All of of this combined makes it worth exploring and is why I like the linear levels in this game. Now the more open world type areas are not as great as the linear levels. I'm not saying they are bad but it has its own unique issues. First off some of these areas are pretty big which means you will do a whole lot of running in them and yes there are a bunch of things to discover and the game also encourages the player to explore it but I think think some of these areas are just a little too big. Also each time you enter one of these areas you will need to do a side quest to give power to the checkpoints and to unlock fast travel which to me was just a little bit annoying. Now despite the design of the levels there are a few other factors I want to talk about. This game constantly tries to change up the levels which is something I really like but it comes with its own set of issues. First off you have a gun in this game. I'll talk about the gun a little bit more in the gameplay section of this video. But for now all you need to know is that the gun is not the most fun way to play this game. And yet there are levels in which you may only use your gun. And well they are not anywhere as fun or memorable as the regular levels in this game. Another way this game changes it up is with platforming. And again I have to reiterate that I really like the fact that this game changes things up and tries to stay interesting. But the platforming really sucks. It is very clunky and doesn't feel responsive at all. Also Eve doesn't really control very comfortably in tight spaces. And because of this I messed up a bunch of jumps. The controls just don't feel tight or responsive enough for the platforming in this game. Now, now I think it is worth mentioning that this game changes it up in many other ways as well. And I'm not going to spoil those sections but there are pretty decent sections in this game where the game changes it up and it is actually pretty fun. So there is something to note as well. Moving on to the missions. The missions in this game are straightforward and simple. This is not a game that needs complicated branching missions so the missions it has works pretty well. The same can be said for the side missions. There are a bunch of side missions in this game and a lot of them take place in these more open world areas which actually helps to make those levels less dull. I think overall the missions and level design of this game is pretty good. This game encourages exploration. The exploration is fun and almost everything in this game you discover rewards you in some way. And even though the missions might be simplistic, they are carried by the level design throughout this game. This game's combat is awesome. Right from the get go you are given a wide variety of moves and all of them are pretty awesome. Basically if you want to know what it is like to be a fidget spinner with blades, well Stellar Blade has got you covered. It is also fun to perform those moves as it is not just button mashing but there is actually some level of skill involved. You have to pause between attacks and have the proper timing to perform them. 
And of course, these moves are worth performing as they do more damage. And this all helps the combat feel a little bit more deeper, which is pretty cool. This game has a unique posture system as well. Each enemy requires a certain amount of parries that will cause them to stagger. Most regular enemies can be killed in one hit once they are staggered, and with boss fights a significant amount of damage will be done to their health. The skill tree is also fairly good as it gives you a wide variety of new moves and abilities to work with, expanding the already substantial combat system. In general I prefer skill trees that actually offer the player new moves and attacks as opposed to skill trees that focus Focus on just improving stats. In addition to this, a bunch of your equipment can be upgraded, and these upgrade materials are obtained through exploring and defeating bosses. Now, of course, having a cool combat system and skill tree is meaningless if you don't have proper enemies to use it on. And well, this game has some proper enemies. The enemies are well designed, they have a bunch of movesets and some actual good AI. And importantly, they keep pressure on the player. This helps the combat encounters feel fun and challenging. The enemy variety is decent as well. There are sections where the enemies are reused and given more health and made stronger. But despite these sections, the game constantly gives you new enemies right to the end of the game. Some of these enemies are pretty cool and unique as well. For example, there is a squid enemy that is pretty weak on its own but it will attach itself to a corpse that will make it stronger. And again, this is just one example, but there are many more. And well, in addition to this, the enemy design overall is just very awesome. The boss fights are cool as well. There are a whole lot of boss fights and all of them felt satisfying and fun to fight. Moving away from the combat, you have a bunch of mini games that are actually cool. Much like the levels, this game constantly changes up the hacking mini games and basically all of them are pretty fun. Now of course it's not all great when it comes to the gameplay play as there are a few issues. Starting off with a smaller issue, the swimming controls are terrible. I already talked about how Eve doesn't control very comfortably, but whenever you are swimming, Eve just controls way worse. Again, it's not that big of a deal, there aren't too many swimming sections in this game, but the swimming controls are pretty poor. Now I also mentioned that I will talk about the gun a little bit later, so let's talk about the gun. The gun gives you a bunch of different ammo types which is pretty nice, but the gun just doesn't feel as satisfying to use as your sword. The ammo is also pretty scarce and otherwise just expensive, so I only really used the gun when it was absolutely necessary. The biggest issue I have with the gameplay is the block. There is a massive delay between pressing the block button and the animation actually happening. I am I'm guessing this might be a bug because there is enough time between pressing the button and the animation happening to study and master advanced trigonometry. And this is a problem given how important parrying is, but there is more. If you spam the block button, you can also cancel your blocks, which is another problem given how far some enemies attack and how you can't recover if you messed up your first parry. Overall, these negatives are not that annoying to the point where it just ruins the gameplay. Yes, the combat can feel a little bit unresponsive at times, but overall it is a great combat system and the gameplay is pretty fun. Now, I will admit that I didn't have that much expectations for this game, but it ended up surprising me. Despite the story, all the other elements in this game are either decent or good. So, to answer the question, is Stellarblade worth your time? I would say, yes it is. This is a solid first game from Shift Up. I like the Souls-like level design, combined with some of the elements inspired by Nier Automata, as it really helps make this 
them unique and not just feel like another souls like despite some of the flaws this game has i think it is a good game and i will almost certainly keep my eyes on shifter to see what they come up with next so that is it for this video i thank you very much for watching bye bye